board is one of the greatest amphitheaters to have discussions about oppression, racism, and other systems of oppression. And I think athletes are activists in a very particular way, and, and very specifically women are, because they're never just athletes. They're advocating for their rights, for payment, for equal access to access to sport. So we see it in so many different ways. I think of Muhammad Ali, for example, who is so important historically, but also was very proud of his identity because very often we see athletes who may not disclose that they're Muslim for um, you know some sort of setback or some negative press that happens. So it's really important to see that the world is changing. And you know, with players like Mo Salah and we see other like Sadio Mane who is beloved all over the world, you know, uh, you see Rashid Hakimi of Morocco and you see other spaces, you also see places like Iran, where the men's team is, you know, with the capacity that it has to really support what's happening with women in that country and their identity and their expression. The priority of governing bodies is very often money. And that's what their bottom line is. It's like they're driven by that bottom line. And so as long as there's continual resistance and dissent, I'm a big believer in disruption in those spaces. And it needs to come from the people. I mean. I think we forget how often people have power in these spaces and we've seen, you know, clubs support like clubs like, you know, the Celtics in, in, in Scotland really be pro-Palestine or something like that or anti-oppression. So I think if it comes from the community, that's where it needs to keep happening. I think it's a responsibility of everybody and for the media to unlearn a lot, lot of what it knows. I think media has a lot of work to do. I'm very hopeful with the younger generations, particularly because I teach and I see they're asking really good questions. But there's a lot of work to do still in this space by everybody. I don't actually think it was radical. I think it was very predictable of France. They have an unparalleled commitment to hating Muslim women and to really being draconian in such a specific and very terrible way where sport is supposed to be a place. Can you, like, if you think about it, they weren't able to ban all Muslim women, so they banned their own. Like, how is that egalité? How is that liberté? How is that fraternité? It's the opposite, in the name of something. And there's an insecurity in their own national identity, which is, this is conjecture from me, but there's such an insecurity of their national identity that they're threatened by the power and possibility of sport, which is so problematic. And I mean, I think that I think that we'll see conversations more and more better because I still don't see enough. People are reluctant to talk about Muslim women and advocate or amplify their stories because there's really a disinterest in Muslim women in the sports arena. I think it's too simplistic to say that uh, labor rights weren't an issue. Uh, Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International were reporting on it a long time ago. There may be disagreement about the figures, but I certainly think there was. And I mean, I don't think anyone takes it as in the West as pious in any regard. They're equally terrible as every other person in the space. But I think that the discussions are important. I mean, absolutely, we saw from the panel the you know presentations that were made that absolutely so much of what was anti-Muslim sentiment. And but the experiential value of hosting it here was really important because those that came loved it. And it wasn't just about the hand showers in the bathroom that got the world all excited. It was actually interactions with people.